Spotlight, quick. There he is. So this is London, eh? <laughs> You've got it! Yes, Alice, you go that way, I go this. They follow me. Quick! to practice somewhere else. What'd you say? Well, 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 well uh, they shouldn't race their cars here. This is a built-up area. Oh. Oh. <laughs> if you hadn't asked me, I think it's a shut-up area. You know, we'd have to go somewhere to beat this in Chicago. <laughs> oh. You see, Chicago, that's, that's my hometown, where I come from. <laughs> Gee, Christmas is... Uh-oh. And I came over here for a rest. <laughs> well, go over and let me get mine. <laughs> You've dropped your letter. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mason. Uh, hello, Sam. Yes. How would you like to earn a hundred pounds? Steady, sir. I've got a week on. How about the match? Which is two hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds. Uh, you know, in in real money. Two hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds. <laughs> yes, yes, I know, but you don't understand. I mean, real money, you know, dollars. About how many dollars would it make? A million. Oh, a million. Yes, I. Thank you very much. Good day. <laughs> now I'll tell you, boys. You really don't realize just how much two hundred and seventy-five thousand pounds is. Mm -hmm. That means one million dollars. No. Yes, sir. I ask a policeman. And policemen over here are not allowed to lie. Cook. Well, can you beat that? <laughs> Lee Barwell talking to a cop about dough. <laughs> What's funny about that? I'm over here on holiday, aren't I? Oh, sure. Then why are you so interested in this million spondulics? Well, busmen have busmen's holidays, don't they? Why shouldn't a gangster have his? Well, you didn't go near the paradise, sir? No, I spent the night at the club and came straight to hell. Good. Where's the parcel? I gave it to a friend of mine. What? Are you crazy? You know that parcel contains the key to a fortune and... and you give it to a friend. I did. Because we can't use that key until the coast is clear. And while we are waiting, what's to prevent Merveil and Gilling from taking the money and leaving the country? The fact that they themselves had a safe constructed that nothing in the world could open but one key. I checked that with the lockmaker. The patterns were destroyed the day they deposited the key with us. You know, I don't think those two crooks trusted each other. There's a couple of dirty crooks over here. 
by the name of uh, Gilling and Murvale, who've gotten away with a million dollars. And the guy who was being chased last night dropped this letter. Oh, excuse me, I forgot. Here you are, Slug. Dear Coulter, Gilling and Murvale, no. Mason and Self, not returning paradise. See? Educated. Oh, sure. R ring, uh, P-I-M, uh, Pimlico. Huh? Oh, Pim uh, Pimlico, yeah. <laughs> Stay house, this city. No, I don't get that. No, neither do I, but I'm going to. Here, now take it easy. If we gotta beat it out of this country, there ain't another one that talks our language. No, I wouldn't touch it. The cops will be after them two crooks. Getting a Mervale deposited 275,000 pounds in Coulter's safe. But they can't open that safe because we hold the key. Uh, I wish you wouldn't do that. They can't tell anyone about us without incriminating themselves. No one knows that but we two. Coulter knows? Yes, but he's too afraid to do anything but what we tell him. Mason, are you quite sure that the key is safe with your friend? Not quite. No one can get that key until I ask for it. Who is your friend? I said, till I ask for it. Hmm. Well, I'll be with you when you do. I'm telling you, there's a couple of dirty crooks here hiding out somewhere with a million bucks. See? That what ain't theirs, mind you. And there's a guy named Coulter stopping at the Paradise Hotel who knows something about it. Well, <clears throat> England brought it on herself, didn't she? Well, sure. Send my mail to the Paradise Hotel. Good morning, sir. Well, hello, son. This is Paradise Hotel? Yes, sir. Paradise. Hmm. Well, probably as close as I'll ever get to Paradise, so I think I'll camp here for a while. Are you the manager? That's it, sir. Ah, well, you'll grow up, and before long you probably will be the manager. Which way to reception? This way, sir. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Coulter, you're very company, sir. Oh, uh, just check that bag of mine, will you, please? How do you do, sir? I think I'll have a suite. I'm sorry, sir, we haven't one vacant. No. Oh. Well, the room with bath will do. I'm afraid we haven't any rooms vacant just now, sir. Oh. Oh, <laughs> I do. I bet you tell that to everybody. I'll tell you what I really prefer. A nice room with a south exposure overlooking the river where Excuse I... Excuse me, sir. How do you do, sir? We are booked up until after the new year. Oh. Oh, that is too bad. Well, nothing better to do, I'll just... Hang around here and wait. Let me know when you have a vacancy, would you? You think you're going to sit there till next year? He kept the morning test for his post. No mail. Good morning, Mr. Coulter. Good morning. Any letter for me? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. No message? No, sir. Uh, can I book a table for dinner or supper tonight? Will you ask for the information desk, please? All right. Let me know the moment any letter or message arrives. Right. Certainly, sir. Charming fellow. Acts as if he owns the hotel. Why doesn't he live here? He practically does. At the bar. Good morning, Elizabeth. Good morning, Miss Coulter. Am I too late to uh, book a table for tonight? I'm afraid so, Mrs. Coulter, unless someone should return their present bookings. Well, do the best you can for me, will you? Certainly, Mrs. Coulter. I'm expecting an important message. I don't want to have to leave at the I said 11, and it's 11 now. Oh, may we, madame? It is 11. And where is Miss Taylor? Is she here? No, madame. No? No, madame, but I'm trying everywhere to find her. Is this what you call service? Oh, madame, you must please try to be lenient. I said 11, and it's 11 now. Good morning, Mrs. Penworthy. Good morning. Miss Sally, will you take Madame to number three, please? S'il vous plaît, Madame. Un moment, mademoiselle. Don't you think 
what you are, coming in late, insulting one of my best customers, keeping her waiting. The appointment was for 11. It's past 11. One minute. Don't argue with me, you little. Perhaps when you have quite finished, I can be manicured. Oh, mais oui, madame, certainement. You heard. I'm sorry, but really, I can't... Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I can help you a little bit. How about one of your staff rooms? We keep those for the staff. All right, then I'll join the staff. Come over here and I'll tell you how we can do that. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, what would you like for me to be? Commissioner, head waiter, house detective? Oh, boy, I'd make a honey of a house detective. Back in Chicago. Well, I well we already have a detective. <sighs> All right. And I'll share a room with I'm one afraid of I can't manage that either. Oh, you're obstinate, Dave. Now, listen, there won't be a room vacant until after the new year. It's final. All right. Then I'll have to park myself here and wait. <sighs> but you can't sleep in the lounge. Oh, I can sleep anywhere. I'm the same to you. That's it. Oh, that then. Honey, me buying me cheese. Thank you, sir. What do you call me? Sir. Sir? Sir. Careful what you say, Roy. I've got a wee guard. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. What's here? Now, how about a nice balcony room for me, eh? I'm afraid we haven't one thing, sir. Oh, yes, you have, me young cockspeller. I beg your pardon, sir. You are completely full up. Yes, so will I be if I don't get a balcony room. You haven't a chance, partner. I tried and couldn't get one. Yes, but I've got influence. Oh? You see, my friend, Mr. Charles Mason, what's staying here, said that I could have room 374 if I asked for it. Now, what about it? I beg your pardon, sir. 374 is occupied. Yes, I know. By a lady, so Mr. Mason. Well, uh, how long will you be staying? Only for the night, man. Oh, then perhaps if I explain things, the lady might be willing to move. Uh, where to? Well, you told me the hotel was full. It is. Don't start it again. If you insist, I'll ask the lady to move. Half a mile. Has it got a balcony? Yes. Well, then, ask her to shift. Should you register, please? What? Some name, you mean? Yes. We oui. here, yeah, please. Oh, sir. Yeah. You see, I never had a room with a balcony. I wonder if you mind Miss Taylor leaving her things in your room for a little while. She's a manicure in the hotel, you see, and she's on duty now. Yes, you can let them stay there as long as you like. What did you say she was? Manicure. Oh. What's she do for a living? She attends to your nails. Is he kidding me? <laughs> He's not joking. You're all right, Sam. Up. Hey, how about you and me having a little cocktail before lunch? Oh, I wouldn't mind half a pint. Meet you right away at the bar at 12.30. Bye, Dan. Bye. 374. This way, sir. None of that. Cost me a couple of quid, that did. Sure. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Oh, uh, will you let him have a room without first seeing the color of his money? Of course. He must know Mr. Mason. He stayed here for some time. Hey, that reminds me. <clears throat> now, how about my room? Both of them now don't sit. You know, you just gave Mr. Sam Huff one. Well, I couldn't very well help myself. No, and you can't now. You see, I know about the little girlfriend that, uh, has a choice document. So, and, uh, all right, all right. I'll give you my room. If that'll satisfy you. Oh, that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> here's the balcony. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> Never mind. I can find my own way. 
your floor, sir. Do you mind taking me down again? Certainly, sir. Well, if either Mr. Vistetti or Mr. Mason call at the office, tell them I'm waiting at the, at the paradise. Yeah. And tell me, can one who isn't stopping here have their mail address to this hotel? It could be arranged, sir. You see, someone gave me this address, and I've searched through the register, but <laughs> he's not stopping here. Uh, <laughs> and, uh... Excuse me. Oh, sir. Mr. Coulter? Mr. Coulter? Yes? I managed to get you a table for tonight. Ah, uh, good, good. Well, tell me, is that Mr. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. Herbert Coulter? No, sir. Conrad. Oh, some other fellow, I guess. Up again. I'm sorry, I've had no word from Mr. Fizzetti or Mr. Mason since they left the hotel two days ago. Oh, it's all right. It's, it's nothing. A friend of mine asked me to look him up, that's all. Oh, Holder, eh? And Bassetti and Mason. <laughs> now take me up again. Now look here, sir, where do you want to go to? Up. Well, I've already taken you up three times, and when you get to the top, you just come down again. It's all right. Now, look here, sir. Here, yeah, I'm paying for the use of the lift, I ain't up. Yes, but... Come on, up, son. You see, the only lift I've been in is the underground. And there ain't much excitement in that, if you know what I mean. Ah, uh -huh, sure. But we'll have a lot of rides together, but don't you want to see your balcony room? Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> Bats. Just had to give him your room. It'll only be for one night. Oh, I don't mind that. I've really no right to the room, but... But what, 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 what what's the matter? Mr. Mason, that worries me. Oh, I expect he's seen you going in and out of your room, that's all. Well, his is next door, you see. Number 372. It isn't that. From your description of Mr. Hupp, he doesn't sound like he is Mr. Mason. Oh, I don't know. Solicitors meet queer people at times. Yeah, but it's all right. Just put them down right there. Yep. That's it. Thanks, yes, sir. And now you've made me so stoned. <laughs> well, that's a lucky break for you. A hub on little much. No, can't afford the time. All right. Too much to do. <laughs> Everything is proper pricing. I made up my mind. I'd have everything money could buy in this hotel. Now I've only been through two pages. <laughs> Might I suggest some black coffee, sir? Yeah. Look out there, buddy. My old partner will just pop you out of the nose. <laughs> Tell you what I think you need, Sam. Mm. How about a nice cocktail? You know, one that'll either pick you up or lay you down cold. That's right. I'll have a cocktail. But I don't want to pick them up. What else you got? Martini, Bronx, Saika, Manhattan, White Lady, Maiden's Prayer. I'll tell you what you do, waiter. Just bring all the cocktails in the house in alphabetical order. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, better start in with an accident policy. Sir? Uh, pick me up. Yes, sir. Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What did that bloke call my room, sir? Oh, the manicurist? That's it. Bring me one of those. <laughs> yes, look at them shirts. Twenty-one bob. Twenty-one bob? Each, mind you. And I got two. Paid seven and a tenner for me garters. If you'll excuse me mentioning it. You're very extravagant, aren't you? Yes, I got everything of the best for summer, I says. Everything of the best. No expense spared, because, because it can't last. It can't last. I'll tell you a secret. Had a hundred pounds two days ago. No. Yes, hundred pounds, all in pound notes. Here. You're genuine. You spent a lot in two days. Yes, why not? Can't last. 
Nice things never do. And they'll come for it soon. You stole it? No. Do I look that sort of cow? No, you don't. I'm sorry. It was a gentleman what gave me the money. One of them eccentrics. I sells matches outside his club. And day before last he comes up to me and says he's had a big win at the races. Gives me the jimmy and tells me to go and enjoy my miserable self. Just to keep it till he calls for it here. Keep what? Oh, I mustn't tell you that. He told me not to jaw about it. Well, 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 how goes it, pal, eh? Oh, I'm sorry, but I, I didn't mean to. Look, fair three times that is. Well, come on now, Sam. How about a little shut eye? No, can't afford the time. Too much to do. Well, you don't want to tie yourself out before the party tonight. No, you've got to be on the spot at midnight. Don't worry. I'll be awake to see the new year in. Not all. What oh? Oh, oh. oh the idea, the idea, the idea. <laughs> Very slippery. trying to see him. He doesn't even know you. What do you mean? I told him only to give that parcel to me, personally. It seems it's safer. Oh. But you're sure that he is here? Well, I've not seen him, but I saw his name in the hotel register this morning. Here 
Come on, old man. Let's see the next one out. Just remember not to forget past it. One secret. Yes. Must only give it to Miss Kate. What? Yes, Miss it's all right. Come on, Mr. Come on. <laughs> Come on, steady. Oh, can I help? No, thanks. I'll get him to bed. Well, I think you better put him to bed and lock him in. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'll take my letters. Very good, sir. Get the car running. I'm going to get the key from a friend of mine. Tony's gone to the house. Look here, Mason, I don't like it. Do as you're told. And remember, the safe with the stolen money is in the basement of your house. You tried that hard to explain to the police. Is he all right? Keep him in the bed. I've got him on the bed, not in it. <laughs> and he didn't want to take his coat off. Stop to your blue murder. <laughs> Very little, Chef. I think I'll pop up and see if there's anything I can do. These two strong men can't do anything. Oh, sometimes a woman's stronger. Anyway, I want to get my dressing case. Be back before midnight, will you? All right. Did Mr. Rossetti go up to his room? No, sir. He left the hotel five minutes ago. If anyone asks me, uh, say I've been called for him. Certainly. Uh, sorry. Menu, what on earth are you doing in this? Do you mind if I come in and get some of my things for the night? No, come in and help yourself. Isn't it time you were in bed? I've been busy. Important business. Oh, nonsense. You're going to bed. But not in that tail coat. This must be worrying me. This room seems very cold. Close the curtains. Mustn't look. All right. There's no reply from 374. I expect the old boys in the garage is going to sleep. 
I don't think so, because the indicator went down just as she was going to ring. Or they knock it off with his arm. Pierre, I know I'm being silly, but run up and see if he's all right, will you? Of course. search every inch of that room. There's no sign of the parcel. Did you search your own room as well? What do you mean? Never mind. Sorry, I'd forgotten I'd given you my room. Oh, that's all right. You mind if I use the phone? Go ahead. Hello? Information? Anything I can tell you? No. Yes, you might tell me why you started Mr. Hub drinking this afternoon. Me? Yes. Don't be silly. He's a perfect self-starter. He evidently passed right out, locked uh. and bolted his door, and I can't get any reply. Hmm. Hello. My mother said to me, does he treat you like a gentleman should? And I said, yes. But I think I can break him with that. Hello. <laughs> Somebody else passed out. It's all right. I'm going too. That's not an alarm clock. But don't you think you'd better wake up? Oh. Hello? What? Oh, dear. What's the matter? Mr. Shirell wants the hotel detective. Give me that. Hello? Come. Hello? Come. Search the room, huh? Get it. Somebody might take that as evidence. Against you? Or me? The hub, open the door. All right, sweet, put your shoulder to it. Keep your eye on that corridor. Please don't look, dear. Where is it? Give it to me, you. What are you talking about? The key. It's gone. Give it to me. You're the only one that's touched that box. The box is empty, and you had it for two days. Now listen, you fool. They've just broken a door down out there, and everyone heard the noise. Do you want to draw attention to us? We're going to join the others. All right. But you stay right beside me. Yes, I'm 
Hello, folks. Happy New Year, everybody. Having a good time? Who killed him? He killed himself. How do you know that? Can't you see the gun in his hand? Well, yes. I've got a couple of false teeth in my head, but that doesn't mean that I'm a dentist. Who are you? Oh, you wouldn't tell you. Who are you? I'm the manager of this hotel, and I must ask you to... Oh, anything that you need. I'm just a man that you want. Now, if there's anything about crime that's ever been done that I don't know about, then nobody knows. Don't you touch anything. Who is this? The hotel detective, and I must ask you to... Oh. Oh. <laughs> detective? <laughs> Well, and he claims that this fellow shot himself? If you don't get out of this room, I suppose. Okay, okay. If you don't want the murder mystery solved, why? <laughs> don't let him walk all over the clues. I'm surprised at you, Streeter. You're a detective. Oh, I... Oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, I didn't know anyone was here. Oh, no. please forgive me. I, it's in there. Come on. That was a lie. Oh, I, oh, I, oh. Madam, madam. Get out of here. Will you get out at once? What are you doing in this room? Get out. No, that. Are you aware that a man has just leapt at me from the balcony when I had nothing on? A man I'd never even met? <sighs> and I'm paying you for the room. Better have a look, uh, Streeter. Yes, sir. Oh. You carry on. Yeah. Will you stop pushing that fish about? How can you sit there calmly when... When what? What do you suppose is happening at that inquest? Well, it isn't yours, so why worry? But if Mason loses his nerve... Mason has only to tell the truth. But he had a good day at the races, and he decided to give his match-selling friend a good time. Why did he have to give the parcel to half It wasn't a bad plan. He kept it safe for Mason to collect when the others had left the country. Yes. And he collected an empty parcel. Did he? Good morning, sir. Oh, I wish you hadn't have done that. I beg your pardon, sir. Go and see if Mason is back. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I've got a terrible headache. Uh, soup. Tomato soup. Yes, sir. Mushroom omelette. An omelette, an omelette. And to follow, sir? Oh, we'll tell you when we want something else. Thank you, sir. That guy had to butt in just when this conversation was getting interesting. Gone now. Well? Suicide while of unsound mind. Hmm. My key, please. Let's have some lunch. No, I couldn't eat any. But you must eat. Besides, I want to hear what happened. All right. I can answer you. Well, suicide. Tell Tony I've gone to my room. Uh, can you remember a couple of days ago when... If you want any information, go and talk to Muriel. Ah, oh, Muriel. She wouldn't remember two minutes ago. Besides, this is important. Now tell me. Did anyone ask for Sam up between 11.30 and midnight New Year's Eve? Ask the reception. George was on duty. Oh, now, that's the first sensible thing that you've said. Say, do something for me, will you, and ask George for me? Ask him yourself. All right. Now, wait a minute. Second question. If you found the key and you wanted to know what it unlocked, what would you do? Ring up the maker. Oh, of course. And send him the number of the key. Oh, Oh, gee, I'm dumb. <laughs> Do you suppose that uh, he'd give me the name of the one who owned the lock? No. 
No? Yeah. Now, one more thing. If you wanted to find the name of someone who used a certain perfume, which you had never smelt before and couldn't describe, what would you do? Consult a brain specialist. Just for that, I won't take you to the show tonight. What show? The show I wasn't going to take you to. Well, anyway, can you describe a smell? Darling, you must remember, you never spoke to Sam Brady was so. Hello. Hello, everybody. Well, verdict murder, I suppose. No, suicide while of unsound mind. Suicide? Mm -hmm. Unsound? Who's of unsound mind? The police, the coroner, or, or your funny detective? Oh, oh gee, that, that's funny. <laughs> Thank you. I like these. <laughs> Signor Visetti, signor Conte, desidero di vederla. Grazie, signor Tellini. Prego. I beg your pardon, sir. You're wanted at the desk, sir. What, sir? Now, what is that American menace doing again? It's the Manchester one, sir. Mrs. Penworth has been robbed, sir. Say I'm on my way and send for Mr. Streeter. And some smelling salts. That diamond bracelet was given to me by my late husband. Real diamonds? Of course they were real diamonds. It cost 500 pounds. And they were given to you by your husband? Of course they were given to me by them. What is your room number? How dare you! Oh, excuse me. Oh, say, listen. If you wanted to find out who used a certain perfume that you had never smelled before and couldn't describe, what would you do? It would be wiser to deposit your valuables in the safe and... Young man, everything I possess is valuable. Do you think I want to live in a safe? We'll make the fullest inquiries, Mrs. Penworth. Don't worry, madam. I'll look into the matter immediately. There you are. He'll see to it at once, you see. Will that bring my bracelet back? Oh, oh. not at all. Yes, no. Now, listen. Just once more, please. Now, if you wanted to find out who used a certain perfume that you had never smelled before and you didn't know what it smelled like, what would you do? I wouldn't buy any more. I'm going to lie down. Oh, is that what the answer was? The answer to what? That funny little riddle you asked me about the perfume you couldn't smell and, and, and couldn't find and, and couldn't... I wish I'd never gone into this with you. Yes, and I suppose you wish you didn't have to share the 275,000 pounds when we get it. If we get it? Three diamonds. Well, we can start looking for the key, can't we? No, I'm not going to have any more of that sort. What are you worrying about, Kilter? The verdict was suicide, wasn't it? Suppose they find out that it wasn't suicide. But it was. Remember that, Kilter. That, by the way, you know, I have already started to search the hotel. What? Why didn't you tell me that? Because I wanted to start with your own room first. Oh, what are you calling? Four hearts. Herr yeah, Colter, come here. Come here. I want you to have your nails manicured this afternoon. What? By Miss Quinn. You know her, don't you? Yes, but why? She was talking to Sam Huff the day he arrived here. How did you know that, if you didn't arrive yourself until after 11 that night? Because I noticed that your deceased friend's hands were manicured. When did you see Sam Huff's hands? When I was getting the parcel from the room while you were shivering with fright on the balcony. Oh, oh say, wait a minute. Let me help you, won't you? Thank you. Why, service with a smile. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going back to the old room? Yes. Not afraid? No, of course not. That a girl. <laughs> i just put these over there for you. Oh, I've left my keys behind. Yeah? <laughs> Look, you will need them for these. They're already unlocked. Both of them. 
was, but I locked them this morning. Hey, you better take a look and see that everything's all right. Oh, everything seems all right. Mm hmm. See here. Been slipped and stuck down again. You better take a look at the other one. Make sure that everything's all right. Oh, somebody's been through this. It's an awful mess. Yeah? Oh, right yeah. Cut this one, too. I'm going to report this to Pierre. Hey, nice smell you've got in that bag, isn't it, eh? Oh, what is it? Eau de cologne. I never use anything else. Eau de cologne? Mm -hmm. Well, eau de cologne. Yes, I found it. In a nightdress in the dirty clothes basket. Then she had the last word. Said she'd never put a nightdress there anyway. How clever of Mr. Penworthy to leave her a widow. <laughs> I say, do you think that American could have been rummaging about in the rooms? Anything is possible with him. Say, Liz, do you remember that perfume I was asking you about? I thought of nothing else. Well, there's one thing that it ain't. It ain't eau de cologne. Good afternoon. Oh, uh, good afternoon. I'm uh, sorry to have to make you work on a day like this. It must have been very trying for you this morning. Nasty experience being a witness at an inquest. Oh, I wasn't a witness. Oh, I... I thought you went to the inquest. I did. The old boy was a friend of yours, was he? He was staying at the hotel and I liked him. Something so sweetly pathetic about him. You must have often known him very well. What do you mean? Well, while you're manicuring, you've got to talk about something. And an intelligent girl like you must learn a lot. And secrets are sometimes worth money. What are you getting at? Tell me what you mean. You were seen a lot with him. He slept in your room. He was very drunk. He'd a lot of money, I hear. And yet he was nothing but tramp. I'll get one of the other girls to finish on nails for you, Mr. Cole. If I report you for impertinence, you'll lose your job. And I might make it awkward for your boyfriend. The manager would be interested to learn that guests are turned away while you occupy one of the best rooms in the hotel. That's not true. Nobody's been turned away. Very convenient arrangement, that room. And if you answer a simple little question, I'll see you stay here in your lab nest. Are they all finished? No, and I'm not going to. What's that? I'm leaving. Yes, leaving. I hate this place. There's something dreadful still about the hotel. I can feel it. Just as I could in his room that night, he died. But when? I'm going. What on earth is the matter with her? What did she mean? So she was in his room the night he died. Mr. Barwell, I won't have my hotel upset by your ridiculous insinuations. Either you stop them or get out at once. Is that clear? Now, listen, I've told you, I can't leave your hotel. There's a murderer running around loose here, I'm telling you, somewhere. I'm the only one who believes in him, and he's going to keep on running around here, because I'm the one who's got what he's looking for. Now, be wise. See him out at once, Streeter. Okay by me. But just to show you that I'm not sore at you, I'm going to give you a tip. Find out the name of that perfume that I smelt in Hupp's room just a couple of minutes after he was murdered. What? Yep. You find that out and you found your murderer. What's that hair oil? Jasmine, why? You didn't kill him. Just a minute. Come here, Mr. Bower. Hey, now, boy, I knew that you'd be wanting me back. Are you drunk? Or do you know what you've just been saying? Well, I most certainly am not drunk. But you right? just admitted being in Hupp's room. Sure, just a couple of minutes after he was murdered, the barrel of the gun was still uh, warm. I... Gun lied down. You couldn't even open the door. Say, listen. Don't go trying to insult me. Why, I've got keys here to open any door, any lock you've got in your whole hotel. Oh, you don't believe me. Uh, what's this? Look. Oh, that's too easy. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, what is, oh, well, how am I doing, fellas? Huh? Hold him while I telephone the police. <laughs> oh, stay down, listen. Now, I'll tell you. Now, don't fall. Don't be silly. If you do that, 
I'll give the police a big fool that will bust this hotel wide open, I'm telling you. And believe me, boy, I've got some evidence. If you're so sure of yourself, why don't you telephone them? What? And let the police come in here and the murderer walk out? They wouldn't know him, but believe me, he'd know them. Now, put down that book. Don't be... Now, listen, fellas, come on, let's get together here. I only knew Sam up a few hours. I admit that, but at the same time, I loved the old fella. And when he was killed, I... Well, I just made up my mind that I'm going to kick the pants off that murderer. Uh, oh, there's no need worrying. I'm not going to inconvenience your guest. Stop. <laughs> He was a jasmine, too. <laughs> well, he can't have made it all up. So Mr. Vicetti is a lawyer, eh? What did Mr. Mason do for our request? He's Mr. Vicetti's partner. Oh, where's your office? I'm not allowed to give information about the guest. When did you say? Chancery Lane. Thanks. Mr. Sorrell, you must be crazy. You give your room to this Barwell fellow, an absolute stranger with no credentials, and you don't make him sign the register? I was in a very difficult position, ah. sir, because, because he discovered your only irregularities with regard to Miss Taylor's room. Your services will not be required after this month. Yes, yes, thank you. Well, let me know the worst. Lee Barwell is, is a gangster wanted by the police in every state in America. See? I know, I know, my services will not be required after the end of this month. Very good, sir. Well? No, not a sign of it. Are you sure? It's not there, I tell you. I know who's got it. The manicure girl. I've known it all the time. How do you mean? How could you know? Oh, shut up. Uh, excuse me. That is not your poison, unfortunately. Coulter, put your funny paper away. Keep your mind in your job. Coulter, I want you to write a letter from your address to Miss Gwen Taylor. Uh, send it by express. That girl's going to give me that key. I've come for my case. Well, fetch it then. Oh! Well? You don't suppose I know anything about this, do you? Well, the cleaner said it was all right when she left here last night, so it must have been done early this morning. It's your cubicle. You have a key to the salon, and you live in the hotel. Why should I do such an absurd, wanton thing? Then it's the manager. He's waiting to see you. Are you sure that no one asked for the number of Mr. Hutton that night? I'm perfectly certain. What makes you so certain? Oh, I don't know. It stuck in my mind. Oh. Possibly because he was the only one who registered that day. George, you're the world's greatest detective. I've got it now. The murderer? Well, no, not yet, but the answer to a very difficult question. <coughs> Were you giving him any information? Yes. What? A tip for the 3.30. Oh. Well, in future, don't tell him anything. About anything. Uh, some letters for me, please. Thank you. 
morning, Mrs. Zetti. I've got your cigarettes for you. Oh, thank you. I wonder if you could accommodate me, if I might. Oh, but certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Cigarette? Uh, no, thank you. I always smoke my own. Oh, of course. Thank you. Say, it'd be a terrible thing if I were to lose my sense of smell. Well, you might as well lose that sense, too. Now, listen, are you with me or against me? What do you want to know now? All right, Liz, I'll tell you. Now, here's a list of perfumes, what my smell isn't. See if you know any more, will you? That's just what I need for evidence. You're the man who's been breaking into other people's rooms. You'd better come along with me to the office. Come on. I'm sorry, Mr. Shirell, but Miss Taylor must go. And I suggest that she leaves immediately. But I'm sure she had nothing to do with the damage in the beauty parlor. I don't wish to discuss the point any further. Go, but... Pierre. I think it's best that I should leave at once. I'll go and pack my things. Sure, and that's the funny part about it. I smell the same smell since right here in this hotel. I'm telling you, Lizzie, it's the one missing leak. Isn't it amazing luck? Another job before I've left this one. Yes, but do you know the fellow? Yes, I think so. He talked to me about it before Christmas. I'm sure it's the same man. He said he was opening his salon in the new year. Mm. Oh, anybody else in that hotel? I got it, sir. Well, I got the evidence. Is this what you're looking for? I picked your pocket on the way in. Heaven sake, shut that door, street out. Oh, you needn't bother. Now, don't worry, I'm not leaving your hotel. Locked. And you're the hotel detective. Hey, where's your girlfriend? In her room, pecking. I told you not to let her take that job. Why can't you fellows listen? Wait a minute. Up, son. Hey, step on it. All right, Facetti? Yes. But uh, they'll know the call who came from this room. By the time they do, it won't matter. All right. Now, this is the plan. Hello? What have you done with the key? What? Sam Huff knew too much about that key, and he was killed. He gave you a parcel. There was a key in it. Sam Huff was killed for that key. What did you do with the key? Where is it? <laughs> I think she'll be ready to talk soon. It was a good idea of yours, Mason. The set here. I heard every word you said on the telephone. How did you know the girl was in Sam Hupp's room just before he was killed? Mr. Shirell? Mr. Barwell was asking for you. Said it was important. Tell him I'm on my way to China. Oh, no, you're not. You're on your way up to 361. You'll find out why when you get up there. Step on with the girlfriend's waiting for you. Hey, Liz. Start phoning Mason. Don't stop to do any knitting. That's the perfume, all right. Now listen, Vasetti. I want a little chat with you about what happened in room 374. Keep your mouth shut. Keep those hands in tight. Or there'll be another suicide. Get in there. Go on. Mr. Mason, Mr. Coates has just left word that Mr. Vizzetti has the key. He will be in room 361 in five minutes. Move along there, buddy. Step on it, I say. Come on, get in that room. Get in there, I say. Go on. Sit down before you fall down. What do you mean? You can't... Save your breath. You soon need all you got. Now, there's your boyfriend. Keep your trap shut or I'll let you have it. Sally, 
You've got it. No, I've got it. That what you're looking for? Well, you can have it, on one condition. If you cut me in for one third of that million dollars. I don't know what you're talking about. That's the key of my personal safe deposit. Hmm? <laughs> and I'm the Queen of Sheba. Come on now, boys, we all talk the same language. Let's get together. I've got the key, but I don't know where the safe is. You've got the safe, but you can't open it. Now, do we split? No. No? No? Well, think it over. Sorry. Why not let him come in? After all, he has got the key. Yes. He knows something about what happened that night. Maybe dangerous. Well, boys, what's the answer? No. Well, then I'll have to persuade you. That's all. And I've got enough evidence to give somebody a nice murder trial. Mason, you gave that key to Sam Hupp. An honest man that he was, he followed your instructions and refused to turn it over when your pal here tried to double-cross you. So you killed him, Vassetti. I never even heard of Sam Hupp until he committed suicide. I didn't even know the number of his room. Oh, uh, yes, you did. You were the only one clever enough to realize that he was the only man who registered here at this hotel on New Year's Eve. You made one mistake, that's all. When you went to Sam Hupp's room, you smoked one of your cigarettes, a perfumed cigarette. Yes. But you fail to notice that Mr. Mason sometimes smokes the same brand. Well, I just took this one from his case. You have a whole packet of them in your pocket. Placed there by Vercetti. Where do you suppose I found this key? In your pal's room. Well, I tell you, he double-crossed his own shadow. Vercetti. In case you decide to try any more tricks, you might remember that Coulter saw you shoot Sam Huff, and I have his signed statement. And Coulter's lying. There was no one on the balcony when I came out from that room. I... Coulter and I were there. All right, yes, I shot him. Now, what of it? You're not so crazy, you have got to the police. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you, gentlemen. There are four witnesses to that statement. I thought if I let you two boys get together that you'd spill plenty. Look out! Ah, oh, gee, that's just my luck. I should have shot him. He's only got a broken leg. Hey, kids. You better turn that key over to the police. You'll find the safe in the basement of Colder's house, and the 275,000 pounds is in it. I know, because I saw it. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but not me. I'm not getting mixed up with these British laws, you know. <laughs> I'm just over here on a holiday. <laughs> Say, why don't you two get married? You think she wants to marry me? Yes. 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 Well, go to it. Say, and listen, let that key be my wedding present. No, it should bring a handsome reward. Go on, get together. Uh-oh. <laughs> 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 <laughs>